We are drawn to this place to remember Brabili and to celebrate his life, not for the sake of ritual, duty or protocol. We are drawn here to pay our respects out of a deep and abiding affection for Comrade Billy Mudise. There are many amongst us who are due great honor and respect. Many amongst us have fought worthy struggles and achieved great victories in our liberation struggle. There are those amongst us whom we admire for their wisdom, their courage, as well as for their compassion. But there are few who have so entirely earned our affection and deep respect as Ambassador Billy Mudise, esteemed member of the Order of Lutuli. There are few amongst us who so thoroughly represent the essence of what it means to be human. Many of us will remember him as one of nature's, nature's greatest gentlemen. He was kind and he was warm. This warmth and kindness was expressed towards everyone, no matter their background. We are drawn to this place as we were drawn to Uncle Billy because he was an easily approachable human being with such a cheerful and invigorating presence. We've heard about the type of person he was, his warmth, his gentle manner, his humor and his humility drew us towards him. Yet his humility and humor had a purpose beyond what we could comprehend. His intellect and his energy and his enthusiasm are what made him who he was. He was bright, he was logical and systematic in his thinking. He was always willing to share his ideas and his thoughts about a whole number of things as we have heard how he taught a number of people. Many of us found him to be a splendid person with a big heart. Some of us in the then leadership of the trade union movement saw this big heart when he guided us as trade unionists in our dealings with the Swedish trade union movement. He helped us to navigate the dynamics of the politics of our movement and the enthusiastic support of the Nordic countries in our struggle, but more especially Sweden. We saw in him the qualities that we seek to see in ourselves, and we found in him the human being that each one of us so dearly want to become. He taught us that life, that no life could be complete if it was not lived in the service of others. From his earliest experiences of the indignity and injustice of racial discrimination, Brabili was driven throughout his whole life by a profound concern for the plight of the oppressed, the vulnerable, the poor, and the exploited people of our country. He was drawn to the revolutionary politics of the Congress movement because this movement sought a fundamentally different order of social and economic relations. This movement sought a society freed from the iniquity of apartheid dispossession and subjugation in which every person could realize their potential. Measured in his delivery, clear in his articulation, and passionate in his conviction, Billy Mudise carried the message of our liberation struggle throughout the world 
but more especially when he was our representative in Sweden. It was a message that found resonance even among people who were far removed in both time and space from the troubles and the struggles of the people of South Africa. It was a message of human solidarity which defied borders and traversed oceans. It united the peoples of the world in declaring apartheid to be a crime against humanity and reinforced their resolve to struggle alongside the people of South Africa until they had won their freedom. More than a diplomat, Billy Mudise was an internationalist. He inscribed his name in our movement's foreign policy positions. He had firm principles. He expounded them clearly. He acted upon them decisively. He taught us that human solidarity is universal. It mattered not where injustice and suffering were to be found, it was equally and always a concern to him. He felt the same anguish whether a child died from tear gas in Gaza or in a pit toilet in Bizana. His principles compelled him and asked to prevent such tragedies. His spirit of solidarity required that we do not accept the suffering of the Sahawari people in refugee camps any more than we accept any more than we accept families living in appalling conditions on the fringes of our cities. It requires that we do not accept the detention of Palestinian children any more than we accept that there are still children in our own country who grow up in families that still suffer from the yoke of poverty. His humanity and his internationalism impose a responsibility on us that as we build our nation, we should also support all those who are engaged in a struggle to build theirs. Billy Mudise was a man of honesty and decency. There was an essential integrity to his being. The revolutionary politics that he first learned in the Fort Hare branch of the ANC Youth League could not be extricated from his sense of revolutionary morality. For him, the conduct of a cadre a leader, a public servant, was material to the purpose they were expected to serve. Respect, discipline, and honesty were important attributes in a revolutionary. They were essential if one was to serve the people and conscientiously advance their struggle. We have heard how he was a person who was attentive to detail. His meticulous planning, planning that was also exemplified in the way he looked, in the way he did things, in the way he walked, in the way that he spoke. His respect for rules and procedures was a manifestation of a deeply held belief that it is the responsibility of every revolutionary to apply themselves to the greatest extent of their ability. Brabili belonged to a generation of leaders who joined the struggle at great personal risk to themselves, a generation that was called upon to make great sacrifices and who suffered terrible hardships for their beliefs. Like so many of his generation, he sought and received no reward. 
This was not simply a product of circumstance. It was a conscious political decision to always place the interests of the people above one's own. It was founded on an understanding that the wealth of this country belongs to all its people and that to appropriate even the slightest portion of the enrichment for the enrichment of a few is a grave betrayal of the people's trust. It is a betrayal of those who fought so valiantly for our freedom. It was this understanding that explains Comrade Billy's decision to count himself among those stalwarts of our movement who spoke out against the erosion of the values and the principles of the ANC. We are bound to act as the stalwarts did with purpose and conviction to unite, to rebuild and to renew the African National Congress. We are charged to forge a new society in which relations between people are characterized by respect, solidarity, and equality, and where those who are given the responsibility to lead do so honestly and selflessly. Throughout his life, Uncle Billy was a unifier. The desire for unity was an essential part of his nature as much as it was a product of his political consciousness. Wherever he went in the world, from Lund to Lusaka, from the United Nations to the, United, to the Union buildings, where he was our chief state protocol, he forged strong bonds of friendship and understanding he made it his life's work to ensure that South Africa built the foundation for a long-term partnership with many countries in the world, but more especially with the Scandinavian countries. Comrade Billy Mudise brought diverse people together, convinced that their common humanity was more powerful and more compelling than any other force that could divide them. Through engagement, through persuasion, and no small degree of the charm that we heard so much about today, he rallied desperate people behind a common cause. He understood that no progress could be made without the unity of the oppressed, and that no advances could be sustained without the unity of the people of our country. He was firmly convinced that non-racialism was the only viable, morally defensible res response to the divisive and destructive policies of apartheid. It was both a principle to which one must hold fast and an objective which one must relentlessly strive to achieve. His commitment to this cause was matched by his determination that women and men should be free and equal in all areas of life. He fought for a society where gender would never again be a determinant of status, wealth, or opportunity. The struggle to which Comrade Billy Mudise dedicated his life continues. It is a struggle against hunger and homelessness, against violence and abuse, against severe inequality and chronic unemployment. It is a struggle for decent education and relevant skills for affordable health care, a living wage, decent jobs, land, houses, water, and electricity. It is also a struggle for unity, for non-racialism, non-sexism, for dignity, for respect, and for peace. 
Today, as we lay to rest a great revolutionary, we should all vow to continue this struggle, to pick up his spear where it has fallen. And on behalf of the people of our country, we extend our deepest condolences to Sis Yolisa and the Modisa family and the Bokwe family, to his own comrades, his colleagues, and his friends. To his family we say you shared your son, your brother, your husband, your father with a grateful nation. Sis Yolisa, you allowed me a sacred moment, a very rare moment, to see Bra Billy and be with him in a hospital on the last day of his life. You did this so that he could say goodbye to the organization that he so loved and an organization that he served throughout his life. As I saw him lying there, peaceful in his hospital bed, I wished if only it were possible to bottle his recipe, his recipe for life, as well as his recipe for the dedication that he showed to his ANC and the people of our country. Today we say farewell to an extraordinary human being. Devastated by our loss, fortified by what we have been given, and moved by a deep and abiding sense of affection for comrade Billy Mudise. Samayaka Khozo Brabili Mungwatu Omunsu Opelu Echeyu Baeta Pele Bahaho Babaholu Bahwe Metsi Borre Libome Mandela Tambo Sisulu Winnie Mandela Gavin Becky Mama Sisulu Chris Hani Darcy September, Joe Slovo, Secretary General, Reverend Kenon Kalata, Helen Joseph, Lillian Goy, and many others. May your soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you. <laughs>